Hostage, a Todd Mills mystery, book three in the series. Arthur R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scribble Pub. Narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter nine. This was too perfect, thought Sandy Wilson, barely able to contain her excitement, as she tape-recorded Congressman Claritin's words. Let's face it, Claritin calmly said, leaning against the podium at the far side of the restaurant as if he were leaning against the fireplace in his own home. The biggest threat to the American economy is the national deficit. It's just too damn big. Simply, the government has its hands in too many pies. We're spending far more than we're taking in, and it's got to stop. It's just not good financial practice, as all of you business people here today fully know. When you spend more money than you have, you eventually go bankrupt. It's that simple. The American economy is on the road to bankruptcy. Hidden in a weight station, stocked with cutlery, napkins, and bus trays, Cindy held the small tape and recorder up to the speaker in the ceiling. This wasn't as good, of course, as plugging directly into a soundboard, and it certainly wasn't as good as getting this on tape for nothing mattered more in television than image, image, and image. But this was pretty good, just getting his voice, actually. This very well might be the lead story tonight, and Cindy peered out of the man who now spoke so evenly, so casually, that it seemed he could explain nuclear fusion in a mere sentence or two. He was making that much sense. He was taking the complexities of big government and putting it in terms that people like Cindy could understand. No wonder he's so popular, she thought. WTCN was going to love this. We could raise taxes, I suppose, Clareton Shredge. Raise them enough to cover what we're spending, but... Do you want your money going to pay for a $200 toilet bowl plunger or a $100 hammer? I sure as hell don't. No, we need to take hold of big government and, in fact, get rid of it before it gets rid of us. I mean, let's face it, the United States government is well on its way to becoming just as big, just as unwildly, just as bureaucratic as the government of the former Soviet Union. And we know what happened to them, don't we? Good Lord, isn't that place a mess? Cindy swept the small tape recorder around to get the audience reaction, a mixture of groans and laughter. When she and the photographer had tried to enter Jerome's, like proper folk, the guy in the tux had promptly given them the boot, particularly when she'd flashed the hundred bucks on her own. Cindy had then slipped past the host desk and into a side dining room. She just assumed that the room with its tall ceiling and wrought iron chandelier and long wall of curtains had to somehow connect to the main dining room. And she was right. After a quick search, she located a door at the far end of the curtains, inched it open, and found herself right in this wait station, which at least afforded her the opportunity to, no other reporter had, the chance to observe the entire luncheon and record everything. Johnny Clariton said, And one of the biggest challenges facing us right now, of course, is medical care. Yes, We've got wonderful doctors. Yes, our technology is fabulous, but as a nation, we have to decide just what the government's role is and how far the individual is supposed to go. Clarendon stepped around the edge of the podium and with a shrug said, Frankly, I believe, and I've stated this numerous times, that we've got to rein in the federal government's responsibility. Let me ask you this. If some fool is stupid enough not to wear a helmet while riding a motorcycle and he breaks his neck, is it my responsibility, if he's underinsured, to make up for his stupidity and support him via medical assistance? Now, I don't have anything against smokers, and I certainly don't want to go tangling with any of the tobacco company. So, please don't repeat this outside of this room. But if somebody, and I mean we're all aware of the health risk, smokes a few packs a day and then gets cancer, just what is the government's responsible for? Should my tax dollars go to care for him? Should he be eligible for Social Security for the rest of his life? Likewise, with AIDS, I mean, gays know how you get it, and they should know how to prevent it. But if some guy goes into the bushes and comes out HIV positive, is the United States government supposed to pay for his medical care? Are American families responsible for homosexual practices? I think not. No. In all these cases, I believe it's up to the individual to take care of himself to seek and secure private health insurance. We are, after all, a capitalistic society. Insurance companies make money, drug companies make money, doctors make money, and so do you good business people. 
All I'm saying is it's your money, your country, and you have to decide how it is you want to spend your tax dollars. A round of applause broke out and Clareton smiled and did his best to look as modest as possible. As the clapping continued, his aide took the opportunity to step up to the podium and whisper in his ear. Clareton then said, I'm sorry, but my trusty aide Carol has informed me that we're running out of time. I can take a couple of quick questions and then I've got to move on. Without saying anything new, Clareton answered exactly two rather benign questions and then telling the audience how wonderful they were and how great Minnesota was. But heed my words, your state taxes are too high, and you can tell the Democrats I said that. He was off, moving swiftly out of the room. Cindy switched off the tape recorder and stood there beaming. This was too great. A true scoop. Granted, this wasn't video, only voice, but back at the station, Roger was nevertheless going to love it. And on the news tonight, her audience would eat it up. Dear God, this could be the break she'd been wanting. They'd run some footage of Clarendon's book signing this morning, then perhaps a still phot photograph of Clarendon himself with a voiceover from the luncheon. There were some great excerpts, a few things he'd never publicly said. Oh, the tobacco companies wouldn't like it. Not one bit. And yes, this was the stuff of great news. As the applause began to subside, Cindy peered around the corner. The five grand a plate lunch was winding up. But a number of these well-heeled executives were lingering over coffee and political gab. Okay, so she'd stick around for a few minutes, see if she could speak to a couple of them, then duck out the way she had come in. Oh, this was too incredibly perfect. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold to offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew. Reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time being true to their values.